Cheap seeds versus expensive seeds. Ian and I are going to face off over whose seeds are better, cheap seeds or expensive seeds. We're going to debate three different aspects to decide which one is the better seed. Quality, quantity, and variety. Point one, quantity. Hey Serena, how much did you pay for your seed pack? My seed pack was three twenty nine. Mine was four for a dollar twenty five, even though the price at the top says seventy nine cents each. Well, I do agree that yours are definitely a better deal, but answer me this: What is the quantity in your seed pack? Four hundred milligrams. Mine has one gram in it. So that means that my seed pack has two and a half times the seeds that your seed pack has. So what you're saying is 62 cents worth of seeds? And beyond that, these are the smallest side seed packs. When we personally buy seeds, we are buying a bulk quantity. We're not buying what is in just a single packet of seeds. And when you start to factor in the amounts that we need to buy in these smaller seed packs, we're, we're getting into 10, 20 of these smaller seed packs. And when you start to do the math there, these, these better name brand seeds Our actually own. start to be a better deal than your dollar store seeds. Only in large quantities. For the average quantity, for the average gardener, I mean, how many broccoli plants are you actually going to have in your garden, right? Point two, quality. These are Canada number one seeds. You don't get better than that. Except for, at least with West Coast seeds, they actually trial their germination rates. And a lot of Canada number one germination rates will be marked on the back of these West Coast Seeds packets as needing to be 60%. And then when West Coast Seeds goes and trials each of their seeds that they release, they actually mark what the true germination rate is and they'll be as high as 95, 98% as opposed to what Canada number one quality is. Even if half my seeds failed and all of your seeds germinated, that would still make my seeds cheaper than yours. Yes, but if you're going to actually consider in aspects of uh, time or, <laughs> you know, the cost of doing starts, if you had only 60% germinating, there's going to be a cost associated. And it's also going to be hard to get an accurate, accurate seeding rate when you don't truly know the germination rate of your seeds. So, you know, you are definitely, not only are you getting probably a higher quality seed with these specific name brand seeds, but you're also getting a stated quality so you can work with the germination percentages that you have. Point three, variety. I have much variety in my seed types. <laughs> this is a heirloom variety broccoli and there was multiple other broccolis for sale no, there wasn't. That was the only broccoli. <laughs> <laughs> but there could have been. And uh, there was other vegetables for sale as well. <laughs> There's at least one of each. And, you know, they all are stuff that would be moderately, you know, successful in any area. I would agree that when you're a beginning gardener, and you don't really know the difference between different varieties, having just one standard heirloom variety might be a great choice for you. But after you've grown whatever vegetable for a couple of years, you're gonna start to see differences between different varieties. And then at that point, it might be worth the extra money to make sure that you get the most productive, most adapted, most suited variety to your specific garden. In broccoli alone, which had very few choices for West Coast seeds, West Coast Seeds had about eight different varieties, whereas Dollar Store Seeds had broccoli. <laughs> <laughs> when you have the right broccoli, what more do you need? Another point too about heirlooms is heirlooms are very easy to grow to get seed from. 
that is one of the that's basically what an heirloom means it means easy to grow to get seeds that's why it's been carried on for years after years but because of that it means that to purchase heirloom seeds for a seed company it's going to be very affordable seed stock to get you might not see that so much in a single small packet where all they're gonna have name brand seeds are gonna have a standard price point they're never gonna drop below let's say three dollars whereas they might jump up a little bit up to like five dollars in the single sizes but once you got, get into the larger bulk farming type seed quantities you're really gonna see just how affordable heirlooms like what they sell in the dollar store are compared to some of the more specialty ones that you can find in seed catalogs from your more you know name brand type companies okay I think you edged me out on variety but I have one bonus point to make okay and that is that not every seed company grows all of its own seeds and so you might buy kale seeds from one company, but they actually buy them from another company. And they supply cheap seeds and expensive seed companies alike. Even though you could be paying a lot less, you might get seeds from the exact same farm and seed source. And I, I concede to that. That is 100% true. A lot of the seeds that you're getting are being grown by one seed growing company that are then being sold off to seed companies. But, you know, as, as I've kind of pointed out, you get a few benefits buying from the name brand seed company that you don't necessarily get buying from the dollar store company. And because you get other benefits from not fighting with your spouse, I'd say we tied. <laughs> In conclusion, I would say it really doesn't matter where you get your seeds from. I've actually bought for my first few years of gardening most of my seeds from a dollar store and i have to admit when i went to buy seeds to do a comparison for this video i actually did buy some seeds for us to grow <laughs> i bought some flower seeds because the amount of seeds that i need for a lot of varieties aren't the amount that you're gonna get in an eight brand seed packet it is nice to be able to get those smaller amounts even though you said it doesn't matter i would say that it does matter because it matters what type of gardener you are and the size of your yard, right? Because if you're just a small plot type gardener, then you will never get into those larger quantities where it makes, you know, buying the higher stuff, the higher quantity stuff more uh, affordable. And you're mostly, you know, gonna be able to get away being really cheap with cheap seeds. Yeah, and I, I mean, another way that a lot of gardeners decide how to spend their money is on they want to support seed companies. Obviously, when you're buying from the dollar store, you're not necessarily supporting a local seed company, making it so that they can be viable in your local area. So, you know, buy <laughs> moral moral of the video is doesn't matter where you buy seeds. Do not feel bad where you buy seeds from. But, you know, these are some things to consider when you go to buy the seeds for your specific garden. If you're a beginning gardener and you want to check out more of our content, hit the subscribe. And if you actually want to see our videos pop up, then ring that bell. <laughs> and we'd love to know what kind of seeds you're going to be growing this year. If you bought cheap seeds or expensive seeds, let us know down below in the comments. Brace yourself. <laughs> I didn't see kicks coming. I thought we were bare knuckle boxing. One point for cheap seeds. No, that's not how it works.